Hi everyone, it's been said that Glasgow has the largest retail area in the UK outside of London. Today we're going to go for a walk and it's one and a half miles of shops. That's 2.4 kilometres. We're going to start here at Trongate, we're going to head into Argyll Street, we're going to do a right turn into Buchanan Street, up to the top, do a left into Sucky Hall Street, one and a half miles of shops. But it's not just shops, there's a lot of history here as well. For example here, Trongate. Tron is an old medieval word meaning a medieval weighing beam. Now this used to be the main road between Edinburgh and Glasgow and this is where the gate to the city was and this is where all the produce used to get weighed before it could get into the city centre. Now here at Trongate, this is, how shall I put it, um, the more cheaper, more grittier end of town. Uh, it gets very nice upwards. So we're going to go for a bit of a walk and I'll see you along the way. If you've ever been to Glasgow or seen a map of Glasgow, you'll see that it follows the grid system, unlike most cities in the UK. The grid system became popular at the start of the Renaissance in Northern Europe. In 1606, the newly founded city of Mannheim in Germany was the first Renaissance city laid out on the grid plan. It later became popular in the new town of Edinburgh, here in Glasgow, and also spread to places like Australia, Canada, and the United States. Glasgow expanded from its medieval street plan in 1751 when the city started spreading along Argyll Street to the west. By the 1780s, urban planning was evident with the building of suburban villas and tobacco merchant houses. In fact, in that direction there, there's an area of Glasgow called Merton City where you will find some very fine buildings indeed. Right, we're now on Argyll Street and uh, the retail area starts to pick up a bit now. Much of Glasgow's original wealth came from the importation of tobacco, sugar and cotton. And who harvested these crops? Slaves. Until recently the history was covered over, but since the greater publicity of the Black Lives Matter movement in recent years, Glasgow has come to terms with its shocking past. We can't change the past, but we can learn from it. This is Buchanan Street, the more upmarket section of our walk. House of Fraser here has 44 outlets across the UK and the first ever shop was a draper's shop that opened here in 1849 on this very corner. Let's go in and have a quick look.
could imagine the problems if one of those bulbs blew. Right, let's go across the road into Princess Square. Okay, we're now in Sucky Hall Street, which reminds me of an old joke, a very, very old joke. Back in the days of horses and carts, apparently a horse died up here, and a police officer came to investigate the scene and to uh, write a report. But he asked some of the standers by to actually drag the horse around in the Hope Street because he couldn't spell Sucky Hall. Right, enough of the jokes. Well, as you can tell, things have become a little quieter now on Sucky Hall Street. Yep, but that changes at night. About 300 metres down the road here, total bedlam. But fortunately, we're not around at night, but I'll explain why in a moment. This is still very much a retail area, but the whole dynamics change. It's uh, geared up for a more younger crowd. There's lots of bars, lots of pubs, and a lot of students around here as well, and lots of really good Chinese restaurants. That ends our walk through the retail heart of Glasgow and we finish here at Tay House which was built in the early 1990s over the M8 motorway. I think the architects went out of their way to make it totally hideous. It's got some sort of salmon pink exterior. I'm going to feature this as the closing of the video but thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe 
and I'll see you next time. Outstandingly ugly.